in the third paragraph makes reference to some people, some folks know, some don't. Aiden, D. Wade. Knock, knock. Dwayne. Dwayne the tub. I'm Dwayne. I knew Bryn would smile. So Dwayne Wade is a friend of his, played in Miami at the time, now plays in Cleveland, so how about that? Um, CB is Chris Bosch, also a basketball player who goes to Miami at the time. UD is uh, Udonis Haslam, so that's a teammate of his now at Miami at the time. Uh, so we're going to call each other by the first two letters of your name, Matt. Or we'll go like Rio, which is Mario Chalmers, and go by the last three digit or last three letters of your name, Irby. Okay. <laughs> your yeah. Mario. Mario. You could just name him Rio. Or not. It's up to you. Uh, so those are our teammates. Uh, Mickey Harrison, Pat Riley would be part of management with the team. On the back, on the back, first paragraph, Dan Gilbert is the owner of Cleveland Cavaliers. After LeBron James leaves, Dan Gilbert has a letter published in Cleveland's newspaper, The Plain Dealer, which is a scathing attack on, on LeBron James and going, basically, don't worry, fans, we'll be okay. We'll win championships, and then they're terrible for like four years um, until he comes back and they get good again. But uh, Dan Gilbert's owner, um, so that's certainly first thing that uh, they reference in there. Any other questions about the parts of the letter before we get into the purposes? Yes. Um, like when, and, and it's kind of like watching game seven of the World Series when. Uh, or game six tomorrow, um, Cleveland, like, they're packing the bars, the restaurants, they're going to friends' houses to watch, like, you know, this decision take place, and, and you're waiting, hoping, anticipating that he's coming back to Cleveland, and he doesn't. And so people get really, certainly upset. So, no, it's, it's, it's not him going, I bet some people were. You had people on the news you know, taking their LeBron jerseys and going, going up in flames. Um, why? Like, what's probably the one of the main reasons why fans would be so upset? Okay, you could certainly make the argument only good player, or certainly their best player, and the the team did not win championships with him there, but they certainly became relevant again. I mean, he's drafted number one out of high school, terrible franchise, and now all of a sudden they're they're one of the best ones. Uh, so that's certainly going to be one thing. Player, he's good. The other reason, where's he from? He's from Northeast Ohio, which, if you look at a map, what's Northeast Ohio? Cleveland, you know, and certainly that area. So, you know, you take, like, most beloved player, you know, in, in Pittsburgh sports right now, probably Sidney Crosby. If Crosby were to leave and go play in, like, Montreal or Toronto, people would be devastated and upset. Brooks getting sad just thinking about it. If Crosby had grown up on the south side and then, you know, went to Carrick High School and stayed in the city and then left, people are really going to be heartbroken. So a lot of times you talk about, you know, sports where players will make and teams will make a business decision. It becomes much more difficult when it's a business but also personal decision. So that's that certainly amps it up to the point that people start burning jerseys and all that kind of stuff. Right, and I'd say, yeah, the difference, I mean, any sports franchise is going to deal with, with this kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's one thing when you have a player traded or, a play, or basically an heir apparent has come in. Um, it's another thing when you have, shh, listen up, when you have the person at the top of his or her game leaving you because he or she wants to, and oh, by the way, I'm leaving Cleveland, which Pittsburgh, we like to treat Cleveland like our little brother that we can always beat up. Cleveland's not all that different from Pittsburgh. Crummy weather, by water, and it's always rainy and cloudy. What's the total opposite of Cleveland and Pittsburgh? Miami. 
Miami, South Beach, that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's certainly the what, we're not good enough for you as fans, or what, our city's not good enough for you, even though you are from here. That's certainly what, what gets folks upset. So, overall purpose, then, what would be some options that we have? Just these one-word purposes. To mend. To, okay. So, like, to mend or to fix something? Off, justify, Aiden. Uh, I'm sorry, Dan. Reassure. reassure. You going uh, duh or Irby? I like duh. Capital D, capital A? Yeah. yeah. All right. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> no, you're. He said re reassure. <laughs> Reunite. Okay. Meg. No, me. 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 I like Gan. Gan. Okay. What else? We got four. I put prophesy because he's like talking about all you want to see for your retirement. This side, B for that's I. No, 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 no E S Y E S Y. This. That's prophecy. Yeah. Um, to like foretell, like you prophesize. Shh, listen up. This is a tricky one. Um, because it's, it's one where people, I think, definitely want to put apologize, and you can certainly make argument for it. I think it does kind of depend upon your definition of what it means to apologize. Um, if, if you take the definition to apologize means to admit that I did something wrong, you could have a little bit of an issue because he does say, if I had to do it all over again, I would still leave. Now, I wouldn't do it the way that I did. So that's certainly an, an apology that, that would be taking place. So you can certainly go with... Um, that's, that's like, it's like I said apology, elaborate. It's, it's, it's his reasoning Yeah, and, and I would say like the justify, the explain, the elaborate, those things kind of go together. Darby, uh, or no, Megan, you said Meg. No, what do you want? Gan. Gan said mend, fix. So if you were going with like amend or to reconcile, I think you still have that apologize feeling going to it. But it's not in the sense that you were wrong or I was wrong. But now's the time to kind of maybe fix. That could also be a purpose. Well, we already have it up there. Um, you know, kind of like come together, reunite, fix the, the issue. But, yeah, that, that apology, and certainly it does happen, um, but depending upon the way you view it, some might go stronger, apologize, some might go lesson. Convince. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, you already, you already told us. We got, we got that one. Now, how do you know he does these things? Where? Such as? For men, who am I to hold a grudge? The whole first paragraph. Oh, here, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, so when we're talking about Dan Gilbert, I've met with Dan face to face, man to man. We've talked it out. Everybody makes mistakes. I've made them as well. Who am I to hold a grudge? So certainly you could be going that he is not going to hold a grudge. He's going to try to fix it. He's talked to Dan. They're going to try to fix it. He's also assuming that those of you who are burning my jersey, I think you'll understand that trying to fix it, maybe you'll go out and buy a new one now at this point. We'll wait and see. But yeah, there's certainly some some um, fixing recuperation that's going to kind of rehabilitation that's going to take place. 
Okay, so if you certainly went with that explain or that announce, um, it's, you certainly would be able to have it. Uh, where'd that go? Thank you. There we go. Darby, and then we'll go to Aiden. Okay, and I kind of got stuck here for whatever reason. It's not moving. Notice in that first paragraph, you know, I was a kid from Northeast Ohio. It's where I walked, it's where I ran, it's where I cried, it's where I bled. Repetition, parallelism, specifically anaphora or anaphora. I think that was all the great term. We on Wednesdays. Um, the big part so far is what's his main justification that he would be hoping that people could relate to as to this is why I left as a person who is drafted 18 years of age out of high school. What does he state about his little excursion? Just a question. How did he know he was good at basketball if he was cut? Or did he get cut as a freshman year or something and then cut? He doesn't get cut anywhere. He is, he as, as a sophomore in high school, so like as a 16-year-old, you know, he's recognized as the best basketball player, not in college or the NBA. At that time, in 2003, you can get drafted before you go to college. They stop that afterwards. It takes a hiatus. So, and then when he leaves, his contract's up. So he has the ability to go wherever he wants. So is a um, professional. Go Michael on. Jordan was yeah. like a freshman. But even he, like, college career, you know, he's still a top three pick. Um, he certainly plays well. Listen up, listen up. He compared going to Miami to going to college. And so with it, and that's in that second paragraph, if I had to do it all over again, I'd obviously do things differently, so there's that apology, but I still have left. Miami for me has always, well, has been almost like college for other kids, and the lead analogy taking place. What do you hope to do in your four years at college, or five, or six? Um, you learn from a franchise, and I become a better player and a better man, so I mature. So. The parallelism, the diction, the word choice, the analogy, the metaphor, all those things that happen in those passages that you read from 1818 or you know 1914 still happen in the same ones from 2014. Tomorrow you're going to have a passage, it'll be older, I'm talking to LeBron James, but we're still going to look at it the same way or read it. What's the purpose? What is he or she trying to do? Whether it's a text you're familiar with, a context you're familiar with, or one of it's still the same process to read and understand and Right now, since I'm staying.